uh, this work is also based on uh, quantum random works. Uh, and we will speak about uh, the analog of first passage time. And it, this was done in collaboration with uh, Abhishek Dhar, who is one of the organizers of this uh, meeting. So uh, the concept arises from uh, the classical uh, uh, first passage time problem, uh, which, is, uh, which has many applications across many different fields. Some of them are listed here. And uh, the basic problem is this. Uh, th this is the simplified model. Let us say we have a one-dimensional lattice, and we have an unbiased random walk in which the particle can hop to the left or to the right with equal probabilities. It starts from some uh, lattice point over here, and there is some uh, a tagged uh, lattice, uh, lattice point. And when this particle reaches it for the first time, that is the first passage time corresponding to that experiment, of course, uh, this is a random phenomenon, so every time we repeat the experiment, we will get, in general, uh, different first passage time. So we can build a, a distribution, or the first passage time probability. OK, and uh, there is also the survival probability from which we can uh, uh, calculate the first passage time probability. And uh, this says, suppose the particle gets killed after reaching uh, that particular tag site, and the experiment is stopped. So this says, what is the probability that this particle has survived uh, up to some time t? And if we take the derivative with respect to time, we get, uh, get the first passage time corresponding to the classical work. Uh, now, this uh, uh, the corresponding quantum problem is uh, ill-posed in the sense that we are not exactly tracking a particle, but uh, we are uh, tracking the wave function of the particle. OK, uh, uh, so what is happening? Suppose initially the particle starts from this lattice point over here. And this is uh, the tag lattice point to which the particle needs to reach. But at some later time, we see this kind of a wave function, which is given by this dotted curve, let us say. And all we can say is that the particle has some probability of existing at that point. Uh, but there is no way, way we can say whether the particle has reached that point or not. So in that sense, it's ill-posed. But uh, uh, there is a very close analog of uh, the, the uh, classical uh, first passage time, which is called the first detection time. So this is uh, unambiguously defined. Uh, in, uh, in, in place of the tagged uh, lattice site, we just uh, place one detector which performs uh, projective measurements after every small interval of time. And then as soon as the detector detects the particle, uh, the experiment is stopped, and the, part uh, the particle gets killed, and the experiment is stopped. OK, and uh, the, uh, also, this is also a random process. So uh, for every experiment, this is the inherent quantum randomness. The system is closed, so there is no uh, external noise. Um, and uh, uh, so we can also generate the first detection time probability. And similarly, we can also get the survival probability that the particle has survived up to some time t. So this is the specific model. Um, uh, the particle follows a tight bending Hamiltonian, so it, an, it can hop from x plus 1 to x, or from x to x plus 1. And uh, we are considering a one-dimensional lattice, uh, which has two L plus 1 sides. So basically, there is an origin at which we will place the detector. And there are L sides to the left of the origin and L sides to the right of the origin. Okay. Now, as we know, uh, in absence of any detector, uh, the particle should follow this unitary evolution, which is given by e to the power minus iht operator. Okay, Initially, if the particle is in state uh, in at site A, the initial uh, wave function is given by uh, this A. Okay. Uh, uh, now the question is, uh, can a similar evolution operator be defined even uh, if we place the detector so that this evolution operator will uh, mimic the effect of the detector? Okay. So of course, that will not be the same Hamiltonian, but some other effective Hamiltonian. And it, it turns out that uh, that can be defined. And uh, however, the, the, this Hamiltonian has to be non-Hermitian in nature. Okay. So we'll see why it needs to be non-Hermitian. OK, uh, uh, the initial particle is A, as I said. And now there are a series of operations that are going on uh, uh, th th that are uh, applied to this particle. First is this projection operator B. Okay, the detector is measuring whether the particle is reached. 
then in between two projection operators there is an unitary evolution and then again there is a projection operator b then again a unitary evolution and so on okay uh, now uh, this operator b u tau b uh, the uh, unitary evolution sandwiched between uh, two projection operators uh, when expanded in powers of tau is equal to this uh, uh, this operator on the right hand side e to the power minus i into some effective hamiltonian into tau up to uh, accurate up to order tau square and uh, the details of the calculations were given in uh, this reference okay and uh, this effective hamiltonian looks like that it, it's very simple so there is a system hamiltonian and some eff uh, effective Hamil uh, effective part and the system Hamiltonian is uh, almost the same as the original Hamiltonian, original tight bending Hamiltonian, except the fact that the origin has been removed from the summation. Okay, so this origin has been removed, all other sides are summed over. So these are, these divides this Hamiltonian into two parts. Uh, on one part, the summation is over L uh, lattice size to the left of the origin, and on the other, there are summation over L lattice size to the right of the origin. Okay. And tau is small enough, so V effective we will treat as uh, a perturbation. Okay, okay so that is uh, the final state. This evolution operator acting on the initial state A. Okay, and we know uh, we can uh, guess why H effective has to be non-Hermitian. It must have uh, because the norm of the wave function, which says that the particle, uh, the probability of the particle being on the lattice, um, being at any point on the lattice, that should decay with time. So H effective must have an imaginary part so that this exponential decay uh, is present. So uh, the norm of this wave function at uh, any time will give us the survival probability. Okay, uh, let me calculate, uh, let me uh, skip the calculation. So it's basically solving the doubly degenerate perturbation theory, um, uh, doubly degenerate perturbation theory, because the two parts of the system Hamiltonian are equivalent uh, up to first order. And then using first order perturbation theory, we arrive at the final wave function. So uh, when we take the norm of the wave function and we compare it uh, to the exact simulation, so in the exact simulation, uh, we explicitly apply this projection operator followed by unitary evolution and so on. And when we compare uh, the norm of this wave function, they, they agree to a, uh, to a very good accuracy. Okay. And if you take the derivative of this quantity, uh, it gives uh, uh, the, the first detection time. Uh, so it has two different behaviors because the particle uh, from this point onwards detects the finite size effects of the lattice. Okay, so as we can see, the decay laws are very different from uh, uh, from the from the classical particle. Okay, it turns out that uh, there is one more Hamiltonian that uh, does the same job, and in this case, uh, uh, th uh, this is like uh, uh, more agreeable to our intuitions. The entire entire uh, lattice is there; origin is not removed. However, in place of the detector, we are placing uh, an imaginary uh, potential at the at, at the origin. Okay, and this also mimics the effect of the detector. And again, uh, uh, the result of evolution under this effective Hamiltonian uh, agrees to a very good accuracy with the exact simulation. Okay, and uh, uh, we can also uh, uh, find an expression uh, using the some results that had been derived in an earlier reference. We, uh, we have also uh, found an exact uh, expression for uh, the return to origin probability. So the particle actually starts from the origin and what is the first, first time that it gets back to origin? Uh, this was not possible in the earlier Hamiltonian because the origin was not a part of the part of the Hamiltonian. But in this model, the origin is a part of the Hamiltonian. So we can get the return to origin uh, probability. Okay. Um, and uh, these are the conclusions. Uh, so I uh, uh, introduced the definition of uh, uh, first detection probability and then two effective non-Hermitian Hamiltonians that uh, mimic uh, the effect of the detector were introduced and we found uh, good agreement with uh, uh, simula exact simulations. Okay. Uh, sort of, uh, questions? Point in time. Yeah. 
uh, what is the uh, what allows you to make this uh, transformation what is tau in this problem tau is the uh, so uh, after every tau intervals of time time the detector is measuring so uh, we would reasonably uh, uh, expect that it should be short enough uh, to get a, a, a close analog of the classical uh, uh, first passage time so uh, i mean it has to measure after short intervals of time so that it can detect uh, when the particle is reaching it I mean, we can make uh, tau large, but uh, then uh, this analysis will not hold. Okay. That's, that was the question, actually. Yes. Large tau limit, these things will not work, right? Yeah, because this is a perturbation theory okay. that I discussed. Yeah, if if it is very uh, if tau is very small, the wave function will not evolve. So tau has uh, tau cannot go to the zero limit. It cannot be a continuous measurement, but it has to be reasonably small. So it is much smaller than one in this case. Any other questions? This plot of the survival probability has this cusp kind of thing, right? And yeah, what so there it? are some oscillations. So in the yeah. first passage time, there are some oscillations yeah, so superposed on uh, on the decay law. So, so why, where does it come from? Like, do we have any? Uh, it should come from the interference effects of uh, the wave function. So we are not working with uh, probabilities, but rather with uh, the amplitudes, the wave functions. So we should expect uh, interference effects. Does it mean that at those times you have? Uh, 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 like a lower probability of finding the thing or I mean this is finally you are plotting the probability right and yeah. at those point this probability density is going down no? just let me get that to, uh, yeah, this, either this one or the other one uh, correspondingly uh, okay this, yeah, this one yeah this one sorry this uh, so uh, the return to origin probability was uh, uh, for this classical random work was also derived analytically in uh, in, a, in a separate work by Barker's group, and then he he found that it's a cos cube term superposed on one by n one by t cube uh, law. Okay, so that is the decay probability. So so. I think it's because the like the particle is inside a box. And you're making measurements at one end, right? So inside it's evolving in some way. So then it might, uh, like the amplitude there, it just keeps oscillating. Uh, I mean, there's usual oscillations, like uh, because of, so I think that's why. Yeah. Yeah. Is it due to measurement, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you.